Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My best friend stole my girlfriend after I helped him now they're together, but I'm glad to be free from their toxic drama. I'm a 33-year-old guy, let's call me Jake, my so-called best friend, we'll name him Mike, is also 33. Mike and I had been inseparable since high school. We met in homeroom on the first day and clicked instantly. We were like brothers, sharing everything from our deepest secrets to our wildest dreams. There was nothing we hid from each other, our dating lives, our fears, our failures. He was the one person I trusted completely. Despite our close bond, I always hesitated to introduce Mike to any women I was interested in. His dating history was, to put it mildly, a train wreck. He'd had four ex-girlfriends, two of whom cheated on him, one was sleeping with multiple men, and the other was two timing him for a year. He cheated on his third girlfriend to be with his fourth. On top of that, he frequently visited prostitutes. Mike came from a wealthy family, his mother was well off, and he'd never worked a day in his life. Money was never an issue for him. On the other hand, I had always been cautious in matters of the heart. Until I met Emma, I'd never been in a relationship. At 33, I was a virgin who had never even held a woman's hand. That all changed on January 13th, 2019, when I matched with Emma on a dating app. She was 26, vibrant, and full of life. From our first date, I was smitten. The first two years with Emma were like a dream. We traveled together, exploring new places and creating memories that I thought would last a lifetime. We often hung out with Mike and his girlfriend at the time. It felt like everything was falling into place. But when the pandemic hit, Mike's girlfriend broke up with him and moved back to China suddenly, it was just the three of us. We started spending more time together playing video games, watching movies, just hanging out. When restaurants reopened, we'd go out to eat. Sometimes, Mike would take Emma out for dinner on his own. I didn't think much of it, she lived close to his favorite restaurants, and he was my best friend. I trusted both of them implicitly. But as their outings became more frequent, a gnawing feeling started to eat at me. Emma would come home later and later, always with some excuse or another. She'd send me pictures of the food they ate, assuring me it was just dinner. I tried to push aside my doubts, reminding myself that Mike was like a brother to me. In January 2021, I began helping Emma's family renovate a new house they had purchased. I was working two days a week at my job, spending the other five days on the renovation. It was exhausting but fulfilling work. One day, while tossing out wooden planks, I slipped and broke my wrist. The injury required surgery, and I found myself more dependent on Emma than ever. Her birthday was approaching on April 29th, and I wanted to make it special despite my injury. I planned a trip for us, covering both her birthday and the following day. Everything seemed perfect until we returned home. Mike was waiting for us with a birthday cake for Emma. He handed her a custom engraved iPad in her favorite color. She was overjoyed, and I couldn't help but feel a twinge of jealousy. A week later, my world began to crumble. Emma called me out of the blue to break up with me. She said she didn't see a future with me because I didn't make enough money. She called me lazy, criticized me for not having a second job, and compared me unfavorably to Mike, who didn't have to work at all. She even mentioned that I was two minutes late in wishing her a happy birthday at midnight something I hadn't realized mattered realized. When I asked who had beaten me to it, she coldly replied, You don't need to know later I found out it was Mike devastated. I turned to Mike for support. I confided in him about the breakup, hoping for some solace. He claimed he had no idea we had split and mentioned that he had taken Emma out to dinner a few days prior. He told me she hadn't mentioned me at all during their time together. Mike assured me he was there for me, encouraging me to reach out whenever I needed. Over the next few weeks we spoke every day, sometimes for hours. He was my rock during that painful time. Then, unexpectedly, Emma reached out, asking to get back together. I was torn but agreed, hoping we could rebuild what we had lost. Things seemed to improve, we talked about moving in together, saving money for a place of our own. We even planned a three-day vacation with a group of friends, including Mike, but Mike advised me to reconsider moving in with her. He pointed out that she had broken up with me when I broke my wrist a huge red flag, he said. His words planted seeds of doubt in my mind. Around that time, I started physical therapy for my wrist. There were a couple of attractive therapists, and I casually mentioned them to Mike. I confessed I was having doubts about my relationship with Emma. He suggested I keep her in the dark while pursuing the therapists, using Emma as a fallback option. The idea disgusted me. I couldn't imagine betraying someone like that. Determined to fix my relationship, I delved into self-help articles, trying to find ways to make things work with Emma one day. She noticed the tabs open on my laptop articles about when to break up and signs a relationship is failing. She confronted me, accusing me of liking someone else. She admitted someone had asked her out during our relationship but claimed she turned him down because she was committed to me. We argued, but eventually made up and decided to go on the trip as planned. Before we left, Mike moved into a new apartment. He asked me to help set it up furniture, TVs the works. He mentioned he was creating a bachelor pad, eager to jump back into the dating scene. I was happy for him, 
glad he was moving forward, but then he stopped answering my calls and texts. The last time I spoke to him was on June 30th. He later claimed he was busy setting up his apartment, but something felt off. On the day of the trip, Emma insisted on sitting in the front seat with Mike, claiming she got car sick. Throughout the vacation, they were inseparable playing arcade games, exploring together, leaving me behind. Friends took pictures of them, whispering among themselves. I felt like an outsider. After we returned, things with Emma grew colder. She was distant, often unresponsive to my messages. On my birthday, she barely acknowledged me, leaving halfway through the day. That night was the last time I saw her. We had an argument over the phone a few days later. Frustrated and hurt, I said things I shouldn't have. She hung up on me, and we didn't speak again. Weeks passed, and I heard nothing from either of them. Then, on August 28th, a mutual friend called me. He said Mike had announced that he and Emma were officially dating and living together. Mike had asked him to keep it a secret from me, but our friend thought I deserved to know. My heart shattered. I felt betrayed in the deepest sense. That night, Mike finally called me. He admitted everything, saying he couldn't help himself. He claimed Emma was his soulmate, that being with her made him feel alive. He showed no remorse, even suggesting I should be happy for them. I asked him how he could do this to me, reminding him of all the times we'd shared the trust we'd built over two decades. He dismissed my feelings, saying I'd get over it and that there were plenty of other women out there. In that moment, I realized the depth of his betrayal. Not only had he stolen the woman I loved, but he had also shattered our lifelong friendship. I felt utterly alone. In the weeks that followed, I spiraled into a dark place. I reached out to Emma's father, hoping for some closure, but he never responded. Emma had blocked me on all platforms, cutting me off completely. I couldn't sleep, haunted by nightmares of them together. My chest ached with a pain I couldn't describe. To make matters worse, my mother, who had been battling stage 4 lung cancer, was told her treatments were no longer effective. She was placed in hospice care. The weight of losing her, combined with the betrayal of the two people I trusted most, was unbearable. Desperate for answers, I began researching personality disorders, trying to make sense of their actions. I came to believe that Mike was a sociopath and a narcissist, and that Emma shared similar traits. It didn't excuse what they did, but it helped me understand that their betrayal was a reflection of their own brokenness, not mine. Months later, I reconnected with Lisa, one of Mike's ex-girlfriends. She revealed that Mike had been living a double life, dating multiple women simultaneously, lying to everyone. Together we confronted his father, who was devastated to learn the truth about his son. The more I uncovered, the more I realized how toxic Mike had always been. He wasn't the friend I thought he was. He was a manipulator, using people for his own gain. Over time, the pain began to lessen. I focused on healing, diving into self-improvement books, therapy, and new hobbies. I learned to value myself, to set boundaries, and to recognize red flags in others. I won't pretend that everything is perfect now. There are days when the memories resurface, and the hurt feels fresh again. But I've come to accept that some people aren't meant to stay in our lives and sometimes, the hardest lessons, the hardest lessons are the most valuable. I lost my first love and my best friend, but I found myself. Thanks for watching till the end, wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share, I'd love to hear from you.